Alright, so, so far, we've been writing all of our JavaScript inside the actual HTML document. And you can do that, but you could do that with CSS as well, but you don't really want to. And it's the same thing with JavaScript. You don't really want to do that. I mean, you can if you're only going to use that bit of code maybe once or twice, I guess. But really, you should do it in a separate file and link it pretty much the exact same way that we link CSS. And there's a couple reasons for this. So let's go ahead and open up our previous file. Now, this is pretty simple because there's not a lot to look at, right? There's not much here. Heading, script, very little body. But if this was a fully fledged site with lots of content, you start to get lost when you have a mix of scripts and a mix of styles and all the content as well. So it's generally recommended that you keep your script separate. By having your script separate, you only have to update one file if you need to update the JavaScript and it will update every instance of it on your website. In addition, it loads faster too because when you have the script inside the page, it has to load the script for every single web page that you have that's using this code. However, if you have it in an external JavaScript file, it loads that JavaScript file one time and it will keep it in the cache and whenever it needs to run it, whenever it's told to run it, it will just rerun it. It doesn't have to re-download the whole code each time for each page because it just reuses the one that it already downloaded. So for those reasons, you typically want to have them separate. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. We're going to take this and make it into a separate file. So the very first thing, I'm actually going to make a folder because I should have done this earlier, but when I only had one file, it wasn't that big of a deal. So we'll call this JavaScript's confirmation box, right? And uh, let's go ahead and close this. Sure. We'll drag that in there, and we need to drag our two little images from last time in there as well. So we'll open this with brackets. It's probably going to get a little irritated because I just lost the file that I was using. I moved it, and yeah, so I figured that's all right. We're going to and open a new folder, and that will be the one that I just created on my desktop, JS Confirmation Box. And here we go. So we've got the HTML file, the dog, the sad face. Now what I can also do is I could create a new file here, I could do file new up here, but I can also right click here and tell it new file. And we're going to call this confirm.js. Sure, that'll work, simple enough. So now we have this confirm.js file. Because I ended it in .js, it already knows the JavaScript file, so I don't have to set the language type. So that's convenient. Go ahead and uh, hop back over here, and I'm just going to cut this code out, paste it here, Red Command S that. Uh, that's not really important right now. We'll go back here, we'll go ahead and delete those script codes out because we don't need them anymore. And we'll save that. And our script code, the way to link it, looks very similar to the way it does for JavaScript. So type, and we have text JavaScript there, and src equals, and there it is there. Since we opened the folder, it knows to look in the folder, and it can see it already, so I don't have to type it in. Don't have to worry about typos, don't have to worry about forgetting the name of it right there. So we'll close that, and we'll close the tag. And if we save it, let's see if it worked. Ta-da! Just like before, but now if I view the source, it is pulling from this confirm.js. So I could do this on multiple pages, and it would be fine.